Praise the Lord. I hope all of you are doing well. Uh, sorry, I'm a day late getting this uh, posted. I really wasn't feeling that great yesterday, uh, but I'm feeling much better today. Um, I hope you all are doing well. I hope you all are staying safe uh, with the snow out there uh, and the condition of a lot of the back roads where they really have not plowed or done anything. Um, today's a beautiful day. It's snowing again. Uh, when I say that, it makes me think of the song uh, back that I used to listen to in the early 80s. The wind is blowing again. Amen. If you don't have that wind blowing again in your soul, I would encourage and admonish you. Get that wind blowing again. Hallelujah. All right. I want to read a couple of scriptures here. This is just going to be uh, just a, a, a short word on what God has really been speaking to me um, about one of the problems we have in our modern day apostolic churches and really in our modern day churches as a whole. Uh, Genesis chapter 9 verses 1 and verse 7. It says, And God blessed Noah and his son and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Verse 7 says, And you, be ye fruitful, and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth, that and multiply therein. Okay? God was speaking to Noah and to his son, and he was establishing a covenant with them. Uh, and he wanted them to go forth. He wanted them to replenish the earth and to be fruitful and to multiply. Now, you cannot replenish the earth unless you spread out. Okay, you have to spread out across the earth. Amen. And then we are going to look at chapter 11. And in chapter 11, starting in verse 1, it says, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime they had for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. All right. In verse 9, therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. You know, if my language program was called Babel, and I realized what the purpose of Babel was, I probably wouldn't name my language program Babel. It spread confusion, this city of Babel. Now, I understand that Babel is supposed to help you understand all these different languages, and it is probably why they took that name. But I would not have taken that name. Now, I want us to look, and, and we see the different people that uh, came forth out of this. Um, in chapter 10, it gives us a genealogy of Noah, and it goes forth. Um, and, and discusses all of the different uh, people of that time. Amen. Now I want us to look at chapter 10, verse 9. It says, or verse 8 and 9 and 10. It says, And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord, wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erech and Akkad and Kelna in the land of Shinar. Or Shinar. All right. Now, Nimrod is the one that's building this city and this tower in Babel. 
Now, I want you to think about it. When you were a child, when you were going to school, and someone did something really stupid, you said, man, you're a Nimrod. Or, you're a Nimrod. Nimrod has always been associated with someone that's intelligent is not all there, or common sense is not prevalent in their life. Someone cuts you off and you go, what a Nimrod. Uh, a, a famous person does something, ah, what a Nimrod. It is not associated with greatness or with being intelligent. And in this scripture, we can see it's not associated with being obedient to what God had said, but rather to be in rebellion and to be prideful about oneself. So, I said all that. Now we're going to go to Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, 19 and 20. Well, actually, we'll start with verse 18, all right? It says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the earth. And as we've discussed before, and I've done several Bible studies, baptizing them in the name. It doesn't say in the names of, it says in the name of. And we know that the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost is one name, and that is Jesus Christ. That's why in Acts 2.38, Peter told them to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't say get baptized in the names of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said in the name. And everywhere throughout Acts where they were baptized, they were baptized in the name of Jesus. Amen? So, we have to keep that in mind. Now, what is the me what is the message I am trying to, to get across with these three scriptures? And how does it relate to the modern day church? The modern day church is like the people were there. They did not want to spread out. We have churches in the inner city, some that run over 2,000 people, yet they have a multitude of licensed ministers sitting in their pews, not doing anything with the calling that God has given them. There are people that could be song leaders and Sunday school teachers, again, sitting on the pews, not being used by their church, and not feeling like they're even viewed as ready or worthy to begin. And some of that, falls on the church leadership, and some of that falls on the individual. If God gave you a calling to minister the word of God, and all you're doing is sitting there and not actually using that gift, you are like the uh, parable, the guy in the parable that was given the one talent and went and buried it, instead of trying to increase it. Instead of trying to do what God has called you to do. And the problem with a lot of our churches today is rather than encouraging people to follow after their ministry, our leadership in the church is too quick to say, you're not ready. No, 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 no. And it's like they, they sound kind of like a seagull. They go, my, 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 meaning it, you're theirs. You can't go any place. And some pastors will get downright nasty and mean when you say, I feel like I have a call to be a pastor, or I know I have a call to be a pastor, and I want to go and I want to start a church. And it's like your church has one million people and they want to start a church in that in that area and you're acting like they're coming to take your people. Rather than doing that, Pastor, what you should do is pray about it and help that person, support them, because if they want to do the work of God and God is calling them, you have the ability when you have a thousand people, when you have 500 people, even when you have a hundred people, to have a couple of families to go with them 
to help them get settled and established and ministering the word. And guess what? When their church gets to a bigger size, they can do the same thing. And when your church re-gets to that size and you replace those couple of families, you can do it again. And not just within your city, but across our United States. There are hundreds of miles in some places in the United States where there is not a apostolic church represented, and you literally have to drive six to eight hours to go from one apostolic church to another, and yet people are not spreading out into these areas. And why is it? Because their church leadership has failed them. They know they have somebody with a burden for the work of God. They know they have someone within their church that could go forth and go on to the mission field within the home states, and yet they fail to cultivate. They fail to support them going and going into these areas. You know, there are too many pastors that are quick to say, well, you know, it, you, you're just a small, a small, you'd be like just you and your family starting a church there. You, you wouldn't have anyone to support you. You wouldn't have anyone around you to call on when you need help. Well, why can't I contact you? Why can't I call you up and say, hey, pastor, this is, this is, this is brother Matt. I, I have a question about something I'd like to run by you. Uh, the church is thinking about doing such and such. And that is what you're supposed to do. Cultivate leaders. Paul cultivated leaders throughout the, the, the countryside and had them established, but they still could, could respond back to him. Today, we have an easier way to respond with email and, and phone calls and video conferences. The church of the living God should not be stagnant. We should continue to spread out, and we should continue to be opening churches across the world. And in the United States, somehow we seem to have thought we've got all the apostolic churches we need. If your church has 2,000 people and you have 40 licensed ministers sitting on your pews that don't ever preach and don't ever do anything, there is something wrong with that situation. The church leadership is failing those, those people, and those licensed ministers either felt a real call to be ministers and had it deadened out by somebody not being supportive, or they get caught up in the idea of being a licensed minister. Because a lot of people get caught up in the desire to be a licensed minister. Make sure your calling is what God wants. Make sure that you are following what God's plan for you is. And you know what? If you know that God has called you to pastor, then you need to go and do it regardless. God will let you know. God will let you know. He is not going to let you go out and, and make a mistake. Now, that doesn't mean that people don't go out and still make a mistake, because sometimes they don't listen to God when he tells them. Now, I've been in churches where the pastor was very supportive and encouraged and was supportive for me to go and try out for a church that was out a ways and they had one church that was an apostolic church about an hour away from where they were located and outside of that it was a good three four hour drive to the next apostolic churches they were each other's lifeline now unfortunately god made it abundantly clear that that was not where he wanted me and my family and let me tell you my flesh would have loved to have gone. It was beautiful there. Plenty of wildlife. The scenery was gorgeous. The people were nice. We enjoyed our time spending with them. But it was not where God wanted us to be. And you have to learn to follow after God's leading, his nudging, his calling, and do what he said. But that pastor pastor of my church at that time was very, very supportive, and he was right there, and he was encouraging. I've also been in churches where the pastor would come in and say the exact opposite 
of what the previous pastor said. Previous pastor would be like, you're ready to go do this. I support you. You got my full support. And the new pastor come in. Oh, you ain't ready. You ain't even called to do this. I will take the wisdom of a pastor that had been in this for over 50 years over one that had been doing this for just a couple of years and had envy and jealousy issues. You have to understand where the counsel comes from. Is the counsel that you're receiving wise and from God, or is the counsel coming from someone that has fear in their heart? Someone that is scared to be supportive. And a lot of these pastors, I don't know that they realize that that's what's happening. That they they are bound by fear. That is what happened in the Tower of Babel. They were fearful of dispersing or spreading out across the earth as they had been commanded. Because I know that they were told. I know it was passed down from Noah and his sons to the next generations that we are to spread out and to continue to populate and replenish the earth. Yet they got paralyzed by fear. Too many churches today are being paralyzed by fear. Well, if I let this family go, then there might be an exodus of everyone leaving or, or, or things might fall apart. Is the church predicated upon that one family or is it founded and grounded in Jesus Christ? Learn to be bold. Learn to be fearless in Jesus Christ. Have faith in the one that has delivered you from so many things. Pastors, it is time for you to step outside of your comfort zone. Encourage the young people of your church that have a calling upon their life to follow after that calling. Train up Sunday school teachers that can either be a blessing in your church or to another church that's starting that needs a Sunday school teacher or another church that might be established, but their Sunday school teacher is retiring and they don't have another person within their, their church that can step into that place. Be willing to work together. We are supposed to be united in one mind, in one accord, working for the same purpose, to be soul winners, to be uh, spreaders of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that others might receive this beautiful truth that we have, and they might be saved and receive salvation. So I encourage you today, I implore you today, pastors, step outside of your comfort zone. Church leadership, get outside of your comfort zone and begin to realize that if Paul and Peter, if they had just held on to the people and refused to let them spread out and spread this message, that it never would have happened. They would have all stayed right in a clump and they wouldn't have spread this beautiful truth and message to people all around. I'm encouraging you today be bold in Jesus Christ. These are the things the Lord has been laying upon my heart the last few days, the last few weeks. The church has spent too much time being paralyzed by fear. The church has spent too much time, again, just trying to stay in their own little groups. We used to have revival services with groups of churches all the time when I was growing up. And now it's hard to get churches that are, are, are three blocks away from you to agree to join together because I'm afraid they're going to take my people. I'm afraid my people are going to leave and go there. I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of that. Well, we don't agree exactly 100% on everything. And I'm afraid if I go there and one of their uh, young men in their church has facial hair that now all my guys are going to throw away every standard they ever had. And they're just going to start going off the deep end. That, my friends, is fear from Satan. And you better reevaluate your walk with God. And you better get your walk with God back where it needs to be. Stop being paralyzed by fear. You are a child of the Almighty, a child of the King. We have limitless power in Jesus' name. Of ourselves, we have no power, but when we call on the name of Jesus Christ, we have power to see miracles happen, lives delivered, addiction cured, 
Not like some 12-step program or 5-step program where they tell you if you're forever an alcoholic. No, I was a former alcoholic is what that person could say. I was a former drug addict is what that person could say. But Jesus Christ's power delivered me and I am no longer that. Just like we are supposed to be former sinners. And now we've been reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. When we are repentant of our sins, when we're baptized in Jesus' name, when we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I saw a thing the other day. It said, do we need to be baptized to get into heaven? And it said, no. Well, that's a direct contradiction to the word of God. And you bill yourself as a Bible study tool. I, I hesitate to wonder what Bible you are reading. Because the Bible is very clear that we must be baptized. It also gives us the biblical formula. So if we are going to say, well, that doesn't matter and that's not important, then you might as well just get rid of the Bible because you really don't believe it. But if you truly believe the Bible, you will look at what is said in the Old Testament and the New Testament, and it will be very clear. Jesus himself said, except you are born of the water and of the spirit. That means if you're not baptized, you're not born of the water. And if you ain't filled with the Holy Ghost, you are not born of the spirit. And it says you won't even see the kingdom of God. So we got to make sure we're preaching truth. If you are preaching the apostles doctrine, you're going to be all right. Preach that apostles doctrine. Follow after Jesus Christ's lead. Have love one for another. Love like Jesus loved. Okay, remember, he took it up a step. He took it from love like you love yourself to love like I loved you. Because he recognized our love for ourselves is not enough. We had to love like Jesus Christ. We have to love like Jesus in order to have the right love. I hope that this message will encourage somebody out there encourage you to follow after the calling you've been feeling on your life encourage pastors out there that might hear this to step out of their comfort zone and do something different about how they've been doing it now i know there are a lot of churches i want to i want to finish on this positive note there are a lot of churches out there that are doing it just the way i said we need to be doing it they are they are training up young men and women to go out into the battlefield to spread the gospel across and those young people are doing it they're taking the bull by the horns and they are getting out there and they are following after the path that jesus said we were to follow i applaud you churches that are doing that i give you praise or or i give you honor for that i give jesus christ the praise the glory and the honor for having opened your eyes to see that truth and i give you props for following after what he has shown you. Continue to do the work that you're doing and continue to spread this precious message across all of the world. Told us to go into every nation. We're to go to every tribe. Nobody is not supposed to hear this precious truth. Everybody is supposed to hear it. May God richly bless you. May you have a wonderful rest of your week. We'll be back for Sunday uh, with service. I just pray that God would touch you and bless you, minister to you, encourage you, strengthen you in this time. Most of us have been taking this time of the pandemic, especially early on when things were so limited, to pray more, to study our Bible more, to fast more, to try to get closer to God. I encourage you to continue that. Do not let the trials and the ways of this world distract you or tear you away. Do not let who's in charge politically get you so distracted that you don't know whether you're coming or going. But keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, I pray that you would go forth. Bless this message. Lord, strengthen and encourage those, Lord Jesus, that are, are struggling with what to do and how to do it. Lord, I just thank you and praise you for your message. I thank you for your leading, for your guidance, Lord. I thank you for your strength, Lord. Lord, I just pray that, Lord Jesus, there are a couple of really big needs that we need uh, in, in our family, that, Lord, you would take care of those needs. 
that you would bless us, Lord Jesus, to be able to continue doing what we're doing, that, Lord, you would continue to give us good health and strength. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would uh, be with me as I go through this heart catheterization Monday morning. Lord, let them uh, find anything that might be wrong, but, Lord, I would rather that you would just heal me uh, so that I don't have any issue. Lord, I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to go forth and be blessed in Jesus' name. Have a great rest of the week.